Thank you, Lord. So good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Les Brunel, and I, I appreciate the invitation to be here, and I just want to recognize the work of Uni Smith and Becky uh, in putting this event together, and just the, the leadership that this organization has shown over the last 30 years against predatory gambling in Alabama. It's something to be very proud of in the state. And it's worth all the ounce of, uh, every ounce of energy you put into it, it's, it's worth it. And, and, I, and I want you to, when I'm done here, I'm gonna speak for 30 minutes, and when I'm done, like I, I've dedicated the last 15 years of my life to this fight. And I, and I hope you have a sense why, because on the surface, like why should we care about the issue of gambling in America? And I hope when, when I'm done here today, you're gonna see why, not only, you know, why I'm so passionate about it, but for you, you know, you have a lot of priorities in your life, but I hope you, after when we're done here today, that you will include this as one of your top five priorities that you're fighting for to make a difference in Alabama and across our country. So very briefly about our organization, again, we're Stop Predatory Gambling. We're a national organization uh, with members in all 50 states. Um, we are a, a 501c3 nonprofit. We also have a campaign that we refer to as the Campaign for Gambling Free Kids, which is kind of a, just a, it's, not a it's not its own organization. It's just part of our, uh, kind of a campaign of our organization to really put the focus on the impact that predatory gambling is having on kids in America today. Um, but I'm going to take you know one minute and just explain to you like what this fight is about, what we stand for as an organization and as a national movement in all 50 states. The first principle, first value we, we believe in is that we believe that people are worth more than money. Amen. Yeah. All right. okay. so. We believe in the dignity of the human person and that no one is expendable in our country. <laughs> No one is expendable. We believe in America that everyone should have a fair shot to make the most, you know, make it a fair shot to succeed in America. Doesn't mean we can guarantee equal outcomes, but we're talking about most of us agree in, in our country that you should get a fair shot to make the most of it. It's up to you to make, to, to make, take advantage of that shot, but we think in America everyone should have a fair shot to make the most of it. And this issue does the complete opposite of that. Thank you. You know, thirdly, you know, fourthly, we believe that a good society depends on, on some key values. Honesty, concern for others, a mutual trust as a community, self-discipline, sacrifice, and a work ethic that connects effort and reward. Okay, those are core values in our country, all right, that we firmly believe in and that this issue completely contrasts. And then lastly, and this is really what the, this is about, is that we, don't, we believe that state governments in our country should not depend on predatory gambling to fund activities, to fund its work, okay? We believe that's the case. Government should not be funding this. Okay. That's different than saying about being a gambler. This is about the role of government in America today, okay? And so for that reason, when we, when I say what we stand for, I, I emphasize that in the beginning of every conversation I have with folks, because we are the most politically diverse movement in the country. So we pull from the right and the left. And almost, almost no one else in America today can say that. And because these are core values that cut across the political spectrum. So our base probably leans two-thirds conservative, one-third you know, liberal progressive. But people work hand-in-hand hand on this issue across all these states in America. And that's true here in Alabama. So don't, in this fight, like you have new allies that maybe you haven't allied before. So op keep your mind open about who you're engaging in this. Don't write anybody off just because they're opposed to you on other issues. That's really important. All right, so I'm going to take a, a minute here and describe what is predatory gambling, because this is what we're talking about. We, you know, we did, you did, did the giveaway before this, you know, which was a good, it is a good contrast. So we, we frame this as a fight around predatory gambling, and that's when governments, potentially here in Alabama, partner with powerful corporate gambling interests to use commercialized gambling. Commercialized gambling, that's the key word, commercialized gambling, and, because when you have commercialized gambling, that means gambling is being run as a business for profit. All right? Being run as a business for profit. And when gambling is run as a business for profit, unlike any other business in the world, it creates an adversarial relationship between the gambling operator and its customer. They're trying to take you down. When you go to dinner, like, they're trying to serve a great, give, give you a great experience, you know, have a nice time. The gambling industry is trying to take you down, whether it's state lotteries, brick and mortar casinos, online gambling operators, they're trying to take you for all it's worth. There's an adversarial relationship, okay? And, and then at the end of the day, this is a relationship that ends up exploiting and defrauding citizens and communities, okay? So that's what predatory gambling is. It's not about Friday night poker games, 
the, you know, we have the Super Bowl on Sunday. It's not like a, you have an office pool and you get a number on the Super Bowl office square or you have a March Madness bracket with some friends like, you know, or you have a friendly wager on the golf course. Yes, that's technically gamble, gambling and some of our members are opposed to all forms of gambling and I get that, but those are social forms of gambling. All right, what we're talking about here is being gambling being run as a business in partnership with your own state government and that creates an adversarial relationship. So why we refer to this issue as, as you know, America's most neglected major problem, all right? And it truly is, America's most neglected major problem because at its core, in one sentence, this fight's about the legalization of commercialized gambling in America has failed. It's failed. No one stands up and says, this is a great thing for Alabama. They come up with all these other reasons why you need to jam it into your state. Well, look, our neighboring states are doing it, you know, we need a, like, it, it's, it's, it's been a failure everywhere it's gone. And that's the reality. And that's why they spend millions and millions of dollars lobbying for it, because there's no organic grassroots movement for it. Okay? So, it's, I mean, so I'm going to give you kind of six core reasons why it's failed, then we're going to get down here specifically to, to Alabama. Over the next six years, the American people are going to lose more than $1 trillion of personal wealth to government-sanctioned gambling, okay? to predatory gambling. A trillion dollars of wealth. Okay, that equates to roughly $150 billion a year. So in, in the next 30 minutes, as we're talking here, you're breaking down by a minute by minute basis, okay, it, it, the Mer American people are losing $285,000 every minute to government sanctioned gambling. So in this 30 minute conversation, the American people are gonna lose more than $9 million of personal wealth. Okay, and here we are, both political parties, hang, ring in there, what can we do to expand the middle class? What can we do to promote, you know, reduce poverty? What can we do to, to, to make government work more efficiently? All these things we care about, you know, provide more, you know, grow our economy, all these things. Here you have the American people about to lose a trillion dollars of personal wealth on a government program, okay? That's at the heart of this. And, th and through this market, relentless push for gambling, the, 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 the public voice of American government today and state after state is commercialized gambling advertising. Okay, except for here in Alabama, because you don't have it. And God bless you, but you're a better state for it. But state after state, what government advertises more than anything else to the American people today is constant calls to gamble. Okay, that is, when you see these gambling ads, that's an extension of a government program. When I was a kid growing up in the late 1970s, we used to run campaigns with guys like John Wayne coming on camera and he'd say, invest in your country. Buy U.S. savings bonds. Like, think about the contrast in that message. You're encouraging the American people to build assets. Now, either in the holiday season or any you know, year round, the dominant voice of, of government is what's, what's the best gift for your coworkers at Christmas time? Scratch off tickets. You know, like, so you, you have grandmothers giving their kids, you know, uh, in their stockings, scratch off tickets in these states. I mean, think about the contrast in American culture. You know, the difference. I mean, we wonder why there's so much poverty and debt in America. Like, this is Exhibit A. All right? And this advertising blitz that we've seen relentlessly, the demographic that's affected the most by this are America's kids. Okay? It's normalized, commercialized gambling. If you grew up in America today, you think it's perfectly normal if you've grown up in Texas where your state government's selling $100 scratch-off tickets in low-income communities. Like, that's normal. It's normal to be watching a, a, a sporting event on Sunday in the Super Bowl to, to be awash in gambling advertising for all your favorite athletes. Like, that's normal today for kids. Think, think of the change in that. It's amazing. I, I'm a former high school and college men's basketball coach. I, I played sports. Well, like, that was, it was, it was about the, the, the competition and the drama. Now, it, it's, now it's about gambling, and they squeeze the sports around the gambling. But kids are paying the, the biggest price for this. Okay. The other kind of other key facts why this is America's most neglected problem is more than half the profits in this industry, whether it's lotteries, casinos, and especially online gambling, comes from citizens who've been turned into addicted gamblers. That's the business model. The casual player is irrelevant to this business model. So here you have a government program that is based on cultivating and, and exploiting addiction amongst our communities and our families. It, it's based upon it. Okay? And more than 40 million Americans today are experiencing harm because of predatory gambling. You just experience a sliver of that in Alabama because you just have a little bit happening here. But in state after state, like, 
This is an, a, a huge epidemic across our country. And, it, and it's neglected because states are a partner to it. If this was Purdue Pharma pushing opioids, they'd be suing them, these, these gambling operators. But states are a partner to this industry, so it's anything goes, okay? They allow this business model to continue. All right, so this, and, and, and this is true in Alabama and across the country. This whole movement for predatory gambling, it's metastasized across our country, not because of a grassroots movement of citizens pounding the table saying, you know, I want $100 scratch off tickets in, in, in my community. I want my kids to be awash in gambling advertising when they watch a sporting event. You know, I want, I want my direct, I want my mailbox to be filled with, with direct mail from casinos giving me $100 worth of free gambling wages. Like, like, this is being driven by powerful corporate gambling interests, but driven by greed in partnership with a handful of, of public officials of both, both political parties who lust for more political power. There is no grassroots movement for this in Alabama or anywhere else. And that's why they spend millions and millions of dollars for it, to lobby for it. And then the last thing to boil this down into one sentence in terms of a value perspective, this fight is not about gambling. This is a fight between love and greed. So, mm -hmm. okay. By love meaning love for, your, love for your, your neighbor, selfless love, and love for your family, love for your community, love for your state, love for your country, versus greed. Because this is about, you know, it, Jesus teaches us, you know, you know, love others like I love you. This is the antithesis of that. This is putting your own, putting yourself, you know, because you, you, most, most folks who may vote for this, they're never gonna touch a scratch ticket or go to buy a place a bet. Okay, so anyone saying this, well, I'm not, this isn't gonna affect me, I'm gonna vote for it. This is the antithesis of what it means to put love into the world. It's about taking advantage of your neighbor and exploiting your neighbor. All right, so the key facts here for Alabama that you, that you need to know, all right? Fact number one, all right? And this isn't me saying this, this is the science behind this. That the science has declared that commercialized gambling is a, is a known dangerous and addictive product. Okay, so the American Psychiatric Association, which puts out the, the DSM-5 every 10 years, you know, it, it, hospitals use it, doctors' offices use it, you know, you know health insurance companies, like, it's, it's like it's referred to as the mental health Bible. They now label gambling addiction as severe an addiction as opioids, cocaine, and heroin. That's the kind of intense, addictive product we're talking about here. This isn't, again, this isn't like a Friday night poker game. This is the kind of product that's as addictive on people on your brain and your behavior as opioids, cocaine, and heroin, according to the American Psychiatric Association. Okay, and, that, you know, and, and so again, on my whole presentation, I'll email you the slides, anybody who wants it, okay? But you don't have to write, I'll copy all these down, but I'm happy to send this to you. But right out of the DSM-5, okay? A known, we don't, we don't advertise any other product like this. It's, it's, commercialized gambling, they're exempt from truth and advertising laws. So here you have a product that's a known dangerous addictive product being pushed to, to across our country to all demographics, okay? That's a known dangerous and addictive product, all right? And you're gonna hear public officials here and gambling companies that say, well, we have all this responsible gambling program. Like if you watch the Super Bowl on Sunday, you're gonna see these ads from the NFL. You know, responsible gambling, we have all this, look at all the funding we're putting towards it. The question you wanna ask every public official, okay, it's, it's a sham, it's a PR campaign to create the appearance that something's being done. Okay, the question you want to ask any public official who uses the phrase uh, uh, responsible gambling or any, any gambling operator, any gambling lobbyist is asking this question, how much gambling industry profits and in turn state revenues, okay, come from citizens who practice so-called responsible gambling behavior? Okay, it's the multi-million dollar question and it's, they don't want to answer it because the, as you heard earlier, that the business model is based on gambling addiction. It's based on the out of control player. So this is right out of Natasha Schell's book, uh, who's a very famous MIT scholar, not, now at NYU, wrote a, a book on, a, a, called Addiction by Design that was on 60 Minutes and so on. And she has a study right on that book that 75% of the people walking into a casino were so-called casual gamblers. They made up four, four percent of gambling revenues, okay? That's, so that's, that's what I'm saying. It, this is a, an incredible um, harm that we're doing to, to the people. This idea of responsible gambling, it's, it's a, a total sham. Okay? The, the industry wouldn't exist without the addicted gambling. All right? And another pr proof of the pudding in this is just the market forces, right? So in, 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 in the alcohol industry, you, know, you have a lot of major companies, they produce non-alcoholic beer, there's non-alcoholic non bourbon, non-alcoholic whiskey, and so on. In the entire world, 
Okay? In the entire world, there isn't a single commercialized gambling operator that presents themselves as, hey, we're the responsible gambling operator. <laughs> Not a single one, including here in the US. And why is that? Because it's not a financially viable business model. Okay, so that's the proof is in that reality. All right, fact number two. All right, at the core in this, everyone tells you, well, hey, you know, Becky, this is just like Starbucks or any other business, you know, in your in your state. Like we, we're, just, we're just an entertainment product, you know. So, commercialized gambling is different than every other business. Okay, and there's this false perception. They, they try to normalize it, just it's like it's everything else. Okay, but it's uh, but it's totally different than any other business. And what makes it different is this: is you know, regional whether it's regional casinos, online gambling, or state lotteries, uh, you know, and including other vices like alcohol and tobacco. So what makes this different than all those things? is at its core, this is a big con, okay? It's, commercialized gambling is a big con. That's why you have a constitutional prohibition against it, okay? You, you're, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a financial exchange that encourages people to participate in it, that at the end, it's a guarantee they're gonna get fleeced the longer they participate in it. So to put it in a comparison, you go out to have a barbecue dinner, okay? You buy yourself a, 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 a University of Alabama a football game ticket. You have a glass of sweet tea. That's what you receive in return. It's a one-for-one -one exchange. All right. In commercialized gambling, it's a financial exchange that's mathematically stacked against you. Okay, that's the key word. It's a financial exchange. They wrap it up as if it's everything else. It's just like in another entertainment product, like going to the movies and everything else. It's a financial exchange that's rigged against you. Okay. And and, and the more you participate in it, it's guaranteed you're going to lose. And su success in the in the commercialized gambling business only comes at someone else's expense. So if I want to go buy, a, if you're, you, you work at a shoe factory, okay, so we talk about jobs associated with casinos, that type of thing. If you work at a shoe factory, all your town, fellow townspeople don't have to give up their shoes, you know, in order for you to, to produce these shoes. Where in the gambling business, in order for you to get paid, like all your fellow townspeople, they have to lose enormous sums of money. Like it, it, your success only comes at someone else's expense. That's why it's an illegal business unless you partner with state governments, okay? So it, it, it's in the family, you know, so it's, we refer to it as it's a form of a financial fraud. It's a big con, just like price gouging and false advertising, both of which are illegal in Alabama, okay? And, 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 and commercialized gambling will be illegal in Alabama unless you partner with the state. You and I can't run our own state lottery, we can't run our own casino or our, online, our own online gambling operator. It's, all, it's a business, Form of financial fraud that's only legal if you partner with the government of both political parties. And just real quick, here's an example of the math. This is from Natasha Schell's book, Addiction by Design. So real quick, that's the math behind a slot machine. Okay, so you know the more you start with a whole bunch of money, the longer you participated over time, it, no matter what kind of payout schedule you're playing on a machine or a scratch ticket, whatever it may be, it's inevitable you're going to lose all your money. It's inevitable. Okay. So that's the math behind the big con. It's, it's, I thought that's the best graph I've ever seen kind of explaining this, the math behind this whole thing. All right. Other quick examples of the big con in action. You know, the, the New York Times, a lot, you know, hear it here. Well, we need to do this to wipe out the illegal gambling happening in Alabama. Yes. Right? They're already doing it. They're already doing it. Okay? That, again, that's not, that's not a reason for something. It's a reason to kind of rationalize why they should be ramming this through. So a couple key pushbacks on this. All right? The New York Times in November 2022 did, did a, a above the fold, on a Sunday Times, above the fold four part series around online sports gambling and the rollout of it, okay? And they showed that the whole P PR campaign by this illegal gambling argument was driven by it itself by the American Gambling, American gambling Association, okay? It's a PR campaign. By the, that's the National Lobbying Association for the gambling industry. They're creating this narrative that, oh look, bring in, bring in online sports gambling or these other forms of gambling and get a wipe out illegal gambling, okay? It's, and it's driven, the New York Times ripped the, the lid right off. It's driven by the gambling industry narrative, okay? It's a phony argument, it's part of the big con. And just, and this is, and this, these next points here are taken right from a letter written by the American Gambling Association to the U.S. Attorney General, okay, Merrick Garland in 2022. Okay, because and here the AGA is demanding, you, we need you to crack down DOJ on all this illegal gambling happening. Yet for, for decades, the American Gambling Association is saying, if we legalize all this stuff, it's gonna reduce illegal gambling. Here are the facts. This is from their own letter, AGA's letter. 
Internet searches for illegal betting sites have increased 38% over the last year. Okay? You know, the, 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 the vast illegal sports betting market continues to exist through offshore websites. 52% continue to utilize illegal bookmakers. All right? And searches for offshore gambling brands still represent a majority of all offshore, of all sports book searches on Google. I mean, the whole argument was we're going to reduce illegal gambling. It's exploding. Okay? The opposite has been true. So don't, these are the, that's the, that's from their, the industry's own letter to the AG's office. All right? Other quick examples of the big con that you hear, you know, they're going out of state, they're going to Georgia, you know, the logic behind that, think about that, the logic behind that is you're losing a dollar to save a penny. Um, like who would do that, right? The idea that you're going to bring a little bit of money back from Georgia, you're going to end up costing your, your citizens infinitely more money than they're going to lose to this government program. So like the logic behind it is you're losing a dollar to save a penny. So and the real intent behind these online forms of gambling here in Alabama, like sports gambling, these like FanDuel, DraftKings, these guys aren't online sports gambling operators at their core. They're online casino operators. Like sports gambling, whether it's brick and mortar sports gambling or online sports gambling, it's what, it's what gets you to sign up. Okay, it gets gets these young guys particularly to sign up. Here's a hundred thousand dollars worth of free gambling wages to sign up for the sports gambling app. But once they can get in the door with the sports gambling, they come back and say they call it eye gaming. We're just going to leave. We're already doing all this stuff out with our online stuff. Let's just one more step. They want online slots, online roulette, online blackjack, relentlessly coming in to every dorm room every office, every smartphone in your state. So that's what these companies are. Fan, FanDuel Casino, DraftKings Casino. That's what people are really voting on here. Okay, that's what these companies are. That's where the bulk of their profits come from. And the last example that I love, this is true for Alabama, is, is, is this is underscores a big con more than anything else. We refer to it as the Hypocrites Hall of Fame. It, it's in state after state. All these gambling operators, gambling lobbyists, the public officials who lobby for gambling, including here in Alabama, they say it's great for your family, it's great for your community to have this, but you know what? I'm not a gambler myself. I don't gamble. You know, I have investment funds. You know, I have retirement funds. I own a home. I have an emergency fund for a crisis. You know, I have a college fund for my kids. You know, I own two homes, whatever it may be. The gambling industry, these guys, none of these guys gamble. So the restaurant chef, the guy that cooks the, the local barbecue store, restaurant here, he eats the food he serves. Julia Roberts watches the movie she makes. Okay, this is the only product or service in America where the people that own it and promote it don't use it. And that's all you need to know, more than anything else. So uh, we have the whole Hypocrite Hall of Fame on our, on our uh, website, uh, on the front page, so check that out. And you have a lot of those folks here. So real quick, I'll just touch on these last couple points here quickly. Online gambling here, especially has unleashed an epidemic of child gambling across our country today. So this is a, 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 a football card of Bo Jackson, okay, from 1988. Like when kids growing up, like kids used to collect baseball cards, you know, sports cards. Now you talk to any middle school principal, high school principal in states where they've legalized this in the last two or three years, they have an epidemic of gambling in these schools, at school cafeteria tables. That's what's happening to our kids today. They've normalized this dangerous, addictive, um, uh, 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 product. And so in these states now, the number one uh, demographic calling gambling addiction hotlines are kids. Okay, this is right now. No, kids are the number one demographic, young adults and teens calling gambling addiction hotlines in our country today. All right. And when you hear, hey, what about, you know, what about Georgia and these other states? You know, you hear the lottery. Real quickly, these are some images I took right off the Georgia lottery website. Okay. These are online gambling games that Georgia offers. And you're going to get these here in Georgia if you allow lottery. Lottery is about online today. Scratch tickets, and it's about going online. Car these are cartoon figures. These, and these are free to play games. Pirates and planks, cats and dogs, lady, little ladybugs. You know, try for free. Who do you, you don't need to be, have an age demographic of this. Who do you think they're targeting with this? Okay? This is from North Carolina. Lucky dog. This is a scratch ticket. A $2 scratch. A lucky dog scratch ticket. Okay? Like, who do you think the demographic is? Is it a $2 price point? They're not targeting a heavy gambler with that. Okay? They're targeting, that's an entry point thing for kids to normalize this product. Okay? As a government program, they're doing this. Okay? Tic-tac-toe, another kid's game. It's another scratch ticket. From, that's from North Carolina. And this is from my own state of Massachusetts. 
You know, if you're old enough to remember this, Joe Camel was the iconic figure to help take down the tobacco industry, how they were targeting kids. Okay, that's an ad for Joe Camel from the early 1990s. On the right, Frosty the Snowman on a scratch ticket for my own state. That's, that's true. All, all these states, a lot of these states have Frosty the Snowman scratch tickets. An iconic figure for kids on a scratch ticket. What do you think is worse? I mean, they're both really outrageous. But the idea, that's just state government doing that, putting Frosty the Snowman on an ad addictive product. Fact number four. Commercialized gambling, no matter what form it is, whether it's lotteries, casinos, or online gambling, it exploits the little guy, okay? So let's talk about Georgia, okay? We're gonna hear a lot about the Georgia lottery, right? Real quickly, in, 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 if FY22 is right from the Georgia lottery's website. The people of Georgia lost $2.2 billion of personal wealth to, to, the, to their uh, commercialized gambling in the state. That's 4,200 bucks every minute the people of Georgia are losing, okay? Over the last, since, since they legalized the Georgia lottery, that's $36 billion of lost wealth to, to the Georgia lottery. $36 billion of lost personal wealth. Think how much money, how many homes that would have bought, how, how, much, how much debt that would have put people out of. And it all went to this big black hole pushed by both political parties, okay? You know, over, over the next uh, five years, the, the people of Georgia are gonna, on course, to lose $11 billion of personal wealth to this issue. Guess, but guess what, as we speak in Georgia, guess what they're trying to do more? Despite all these financial losses, guess what Georgia's debating right now? Online gambling, brick and mortar casinos. That's just from the lottery they lose and all that stuff, okay? It's never enough. So that's always the question is, how much gambling losses is enough? How much is enough? It's never enough, okay? It's because it's the ultimate gimmick, okay? We call it when Dra Dracula's in, par in charge of the blood bank. Okay? When government's running this, because state governments are running this stuff, that's a $50 scratch off, actually, that's a $100 scratch off, or should I say, $50 scratch off ticket from the Georgia lottery in a state where people make $7.25 an hour. Okay? There's no, they said they're going to regulate this to protect the people. That's what regulated gambling looks like. Those cartoon like games, $50 scratch off tickets, Texas sells a $100 scratch off ticket. All right? Last fact, because two thirds of the public here is never going to gamble in your state. They say, listen, I'm not a big fan of this, but how's it going to affect me? You pay even if you don't play. You pay even if you don't play. All these states that have gone down this route of predatory gambling, they're the, most of them are in the biggest financial crisis in the country. Illinois, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, California. You know, guess what they all have in common? They're huge predatory gambling states. This is the ultimate budget gimmick. Okay, so this is right from one of the, uh, there's several reports like this. This is one of the most famous ones, national report on state revenues from gambling. It's a con, it's part of the con that this is a good revenue source. All right, so those are the facts I'll summarize there, the, the key facts to remember. Um, and the last line I'll leave you with is this. And I, this is what drives me as much as anything on this. I come from Massachusetts, but this, this applies everywhere we go in our country. You know, you're, you're taught as a little kid, you know, you know, no taxation without representation. Right, that was one of our core Democratic founding principles is why they dumped the, the tea in the Boston Harbor. No taxation without representation. Well, today in America, okay, we have a, we have a program of taxation by exploitation in the form of, of predatory gambling, the public voice of American government today. And it's time that we added the principle of no taxation by exploitation right alongside the core democratic principle of no taxation without representation. So thank you for the invitation to be here today, and I'm glad to take any questions. Best. Yes. If you've got a sauce team for in line, um, you can say a couple of questions. I wanted to, I'll start off with some questions. Yeah. When you were talking about the kids being addicted, this is just an epidemic everywhere. Y'all, it's not happening in Alabama yet because online sports betting is not illegal. I mean, is illegal in Alabama. So just know our kids are fine right now, but just wait. Okay, have you ever seen a state that has gone from no gambling like we have now, I mean, are besides the Indians and the illegal stuff going on. Have you ever seen a state go from nothing to what is being proposed this year? 10 new casinos with class three gaming all the way with cards, roulette and all of that, online sports gambling and a state lottery. Have you ever seen a state yeah. go from zero yeah, well, to zero? The, state, the states, the, the only state I could think of, because you guys are really a model here in the country for what you've done. Uh, the only state that's kind of close to that would be the state of Virginia where they just ran through, they've had a, had a lottery for a while, but then they ran through online gambling, they brick and mortar casinos, just all, all happened like within the last four or five years. And the state had been totally overrun with predatory gambling. It's, it's everywhere in that state now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That, you did yeah. that. It's been a disaster. It's been a huge disaster all these things. Okay, done. 
Um, with all the states around Alabama having legalized gambling, are any of those states pumping money into Alabama to prevent gambling here? Well, that, that I don't know. I don't know what all the, the, the lobbying, but we, we call that phenomenal. Like that happens in all these states. Because I said, there's no grassroots movement for any of this. So we, we call the phenomenon when you have gambling interests, lobbying against other predatory gambling interests, we call that green lock. Okay? Green lock. Uh, and so I'm sure that may be happening here. I don't know the extent of it, but most of the time, these are national companies. And so they, they want to get in everywhere. They want this, the, the a biggest pie as possible. So they just smite over themselves that at some point they work it out. But it wouldn't surprise me that may be happening here. But look, we, don't, we as an organization, our movement doesn't take any commercialized gambling industry money. Okay, so that's important enough. Um, since we have, we are surrounded by gambling, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, have your, has your group done a economic cost analysis of a saturated market and what that will do in Alabama? So, the, so we haven't done ourselves the, the so-called saturation. Our, we, we, we think it's, it's wrong here. So we think it's wrong in Mississippi. So we don't make the case, well, look, your market's saturated. That's not an argument that we make. But, but in the big picture, as an economic impact issue, it, it's been a huge failure in all those states. You know, the, the Wall Street Journal had a huge story, you know, from Mississippi. You had a Mississippi Chamber of Commerce guy complaining that they were losing all the, these businesses going to Georgia, you know. If you get out his risk with all this gambling, it, it, you know, so that's well, an economic engine for your state, but they're still losing all these other businesses. Like it's, this is, this is something commercialized gambling represents a sterling transfer of wealth. The economic impact of, of commercialized gambling is the equivalent of taking out a hundred dollar bill from your wallet, throwing it into the street, and then paying somebody a minimum wage to pick it up. Okay. It's a sterile transfer of wealth from millions of people's pockets into the pockets of a very privileged few. Okay. It's a gimmick. This is Becca Blocker. She's a research research fellow for Eagle Forum. She does a lot of the presentations on the Great Reset, CBDC. She's amazing to get to know her. Uh, she also does graphic design for us. She's sitting over there, so meet her today. Thank you. Um, I was looking at statistics about crime and how it correlates with having casinos in your town or whatever. And since the movie Sound of Freedom came out, there's been a lot more awareness about sex trafficking. And I had a friend tell me yesterday, um, her daughter, was an intern at the sex trafficking organization in Mississippi. And she said that um, trafficking went up 80% when gambling was entered. So can you speak more about that? Yeah, so th th there's, there's several reasons for that. Yeah, human sex trafficking and, and predatory gambling, they're inestimably linked. Okay, they're linked. Yeah. And, and what it, for several reasons. One is a lot of times sex, human sex trafficking uh, trends will, will be our operators will meet in casinos to do transfers and that type of stuff. So that's a, one big reason for it. But another big reason why they go hand in hand is if, if you have all these illegal profits, and this is true for all their illegal businesses and they're, they're trying to promote new state, like whether they're illegal drugs, um, you know, you know, the human sex trafficking and so on, is you have all this cash, like how are you washing? You know, how do you, you have a million dollars in cash, like how do you, what do you do with it? How do you, what do you want to put that to the, buy real estate with that and so on. So casinos are, are like the private entity in our country and as well as lotteries and other online operators for money laundering. So if, if you you run an illegal business of any kind, you love commercialized gambling in your state because you wash your money through that. You know, if it ain't more than 10 grand of, of winnings, you have to report to the IRS. But you have people who go in literally with like eight grand of cash, watch it through a slot machine, then get a payout for, oh, if they put it as gambling winnings. Okay, so you guess you have to pay tax on it, but the, the guy washes that money, he wants to pay tax, he wants to show that that money's legal. So they counter as gambling money. So casinos, they love, uh, they, they partner with, um, you know, we should say they partner, but they, 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 they feed this in all these illegal industries in our country, especially human sex trafficking, to so allow them to wash their profits. And that's right, that's not me saying that. It's like from the Department of Treasury, which oversees the money laundering issues in our country. So it's a great question. So yeah, if you're worried about sex trafficking, you have to fight like heck to keep this industry out of your state, including lotteries, because they, they want money to lotteries as well. Uh, first, kind of what you just said, I'm a native of North Carolina, and most of the legislators that brought the moderate to our state, because he wound up being accused of corruption, sound like the jail. So, um, but my question to you was, what do you think is the most effective way to block this push to expand gambling in Alabama right now? Here you go. Well, I think you got to fight like Hank in your legislature. If you go to the ballot, 
It's a, cause it's not to be a fair fight of the ghost of the ballot. They're going to outspend you like 25 billion to a million. Like there's no, there's no fair fight involved. So the key is, is in the legislature, but, but the, the truth is our side of this, but the key is like legislators need to know, like a lot of our base, like they care about this issue, but they, you know, it's, it's not their top 10 sometimes. So you have to say like, you have to show in the state that you can lose an election. Okay. You can use a primary on predatory gamble. You got to put the fear of God into these legislators that this is something you get beat on. So it's, it's an, any other issue, it's about organizing, it's getting petitions, you know, calling, you know, calling them relentlessly and showing them that this is an issue that you, you can't, it, it's been happening in our country. You, people have lost primaries on predatory gambling, but you got to make it an issue. Yeah. You know, they get away with it because they, they think it's not a third rail issue. Is this a third rail issue? So, yeah, yeah. Right. so right. Things are, former state senator. Hey, Les, you probably don't remember, we met 15 years ago when I was working for Governor Riley as a staffer on the anti-legal gambling So I'm ready for Chief Justice now, and I just wanted to ask you, uh, the Supreme Court in Alabama has ruled no fewer than 19 times now that what we have going on in the state is illegal and unconstitutional. Well, what I think we have is a real problem in enforcement of the law, particularly at the local level, where we see gambling interests try to confuse local officials and sheriffs and, and law enforcement folks about what's legal and not legal. Have you seen that in other states? And if so, how do we go about educating and encouraging local law enforcement to do the job with the laws that are on the books to that? Yeah. So it's a really important question. And the reason why, so we talk, go back to the illegal gambling argument that somehow this is going to wipe out illegal gambling. Well, when, when you have, when you bring in all these forms of commercialized gambling, it gives license for all these other illegal operators, right? So it kind of mobilizes activity. So normal law enforcement folks who normally be cracking down on these guys, they begin to see this not as an issue of like predatory behavior or exploited practices. They start to say that, well, this is, becomes a revenue issue. This becomes an issue for like the state lottery commission or the, your state gambling commission to crack down on this. So they start getting hands off on enforcement. So, so if anything, it would get worse. All those things you're talking, so the way you get them enforce the, the, the legal stuff that's happening is like, this is a priority for our state. You need, it's kind of many of the facts, we, the impacts of illegal gambling on human, on the human condition are the same as, as, as commercialized gambling virus. It, but so you need to educate them why it's still a, you know, a, a very dangerous thing and harmful thing financially for people. So you, that's still a reason why, but we you have to show the political will as, as a region, like that this is a priority, you know, in our community, this is affecting our communities to found it, you know? And I think, it, but yeah, because a, a legal gambling situation get far worse if you go down this ring. So I don't know if that answers your question, but, that, but that's easy. The answer is yes, in every state, they go hand in hand. Like North Carolina, it has, they'll be the gambling everywhere now. These machines everywhere. They, 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 have, they have gambling everywhere now in North Carolina almost. That's it stopped and, you know, they could keeps going and going. So, and we can talk more offline, sir, you know, with the banking or to What is the most concise response to a legislator who tells you, well, I don't believe in it, but um, I think the people should end sure. it. Sorry. Yeah, that, so, oh, yeah, I'm going to pass it on. It could be the Taylor Craig. So, that, that we call that, 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 what I say to that is this. It might, might, this is my most concise. Talk, this isn't about, you know, this isn't about letting the people vote. This is really about let us buy the vote. Okay, any legislator who tells you, well, I'm, not, I'm personally against this, but I think the people should vote on it. I, I go right back at them and say, you know, if you were out spending your primary three to one, you'd have a pretty hard time winning re-election despite your merits. Now imagine going to the ballot and being outspent 5,000 to one. I mean, you think you have a, like, any chance, any chance of winning against your opponent? Of course you would. You know, that's not the, the idea that somehow you're going to get a fair democratic process or an educated electorate if this goes to the ballot. It, it's, it's complete dishonesty. So when you legislate, I'll you that, they have four predatory gain. They're trying to have it both ways. It's, it's not, they, the whole reason why you have a constitutional prohibition in this is because the legislators have a, have a duty to the Constitution to do the right thing by the people of this state. Okay? So it's a pain inside you that they're really four predatory gain. So I'll go ahead and answer your question. Oh, good there. All right, last question. Um, so... In other states, they have tried to tie commercialized gambling to helping education. We know the state of education nationwide is a quantum thing. And so and I've heard it here even in our own state. So have there been studies done in other states where they've gone with commercialized gambling, intending, of course, for it to help public education, and we can see the numbers going down. Are there stu are those studies out there? So the, 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 so the, the last fact that was, was the woman, Lucy Dugan, did that study from the Rockefeller Center, and now she's at the Oregon Institute. Like, she's the independent expert in the country of government revenues from gambling. Consistently shows, like, it's it's a gimmick. You know, when you talk about the big con, it's a con as a revenue source. It's a budget gimmick. So inevitably, they're going to say all this money's coming in, but they don't earmark new money for education. 
They just take the money that was already going to education and put it to some other program, yeah. and they just earmark the money coming in to, so from gambling to that. But, but, it, but that doesn't stop. The only reason why they, they don't really keep that revenue source stable once they, once they stop bringing that in is they have that new, more extreme forms of gambling because it's a gimmick, right? So that's why you go from a dollar already ticket for lotteries to sell $100 scratch off tickets because you have to keep it, that final coming up. It does your economy, kind of, I like other tax things. When your economy grows, your, your tax system grows. Gambling only grows by having new forms of gambling. So your education costs are going to go up 2 or 3% a year. This revenue source does not do that unless you keep expanding it. You see, does that make sense? So that's why it's a gimmick. It's inherently, it's, that's why it's failed in every state. It's been a failed experiment. And Alabama is a better state for it because you have a good down that road. Okay, one more comment. Uh, Representative Mooney from the back. Go ahead and I'll repeat it for the camera. Okay, so let me repeat that for those of you who did not hear. In the bill, there is an expansion for Medicaid, which is a cost that we cannot calculate right now. And it's going to be much more. It's going to cost us so much more than the actual, like it's going to cost us a lot anyway, but it's going to be so much more that we can't even predict what it's going to cost us. Um, okay, we're... Well, Les is going to be around for a little bit longer uh, during lunch, and then he's got to go catch his plane. So you'll have time to visit. Please give him a great round of applause. Thank you. 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 Thank you.